And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio. And for the next hour, we are going to be talking about liberty and about what you can do to help preserve yours and the liberty of those around you as well. Joining me in the studio, I'm Steve Floyd, by the way, the man of the face made for radio. Across from me is Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. One of the sponsors of the show, also Josh Bennett next to him from Bighorn Enterprises, and Dave Giesel from the, <laughs> there it is, I managed to blow it out of my mind once again, it's the Campaign for Liberty right here in the Fairbanks chapter, it's associated with Ron Paul and all of those other kooky people. Now, gentlemen, I have an ITA endorsement thing here, no, what? Say, say what? Sponsored by Josh Bennett. Okay, oh, that's right, Otherwise, we do. We didn't make, to make sure that we do let you all know that it is... Uh, Paid for by Joshua and Aaron Bennett. The, both of them are running for office this year, and we just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that it is paid for by them. So that being said, by the campaigns, by their campaigns. Good. On this box five eight five seven eight nine nine seven zero one. On the Bennett chair. Hey, you know what? Now it's the, now there's absolutely no question in anybody's mind. That Dave's a sheep ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I have uh, uh, facts here from the ITA, the Interior Taxpayers Association. They had a candidate forum this week, and here is what the statement says. At the 25th Annual Interior Taxpayers Association Candidates Forum, two candidates packed the chamber with their own supporters in a bid to manipulate the group's endorsements. Due to irregularities in the balloting, The ITA will not be making endorsements this year. The forum was well attended and informative. ITA regrets this turn of events and wants to thank the candidates for participating. ITA offers their sincerest apology for this unexpected outcome to the candidates, to members who listened and cast thoughtful votes, and to those who count on our endorsements each year to help them choose fiscally responsible candidates. That is the end of the statement there sent from uh, Donna Gilbert at the Ranch Motel. The statement from the ITA about their candidates forum. Now you guys were there. What's she yeah. talk? What's she talking about? Well, I think it's about as clear as the waters of Bristol Bay. Who she's uh-huh. talking about? <laughs> All, right. All right. For anybody not in on that joke, Bristol Bay, not exactly the clearest waters in Alaska, and yet uh, that is one of the phrases used in one of the advertisements from a uh, against uh, the a group that's, mine. that doesn't want any development near Bristol Bay. Because I guess those waters are so clear to begin with. All right. Seriously, Aaron, talk Aaron about it. Aaron was given a challenge last Monday, I believe. He was on your show. Yeah. He was given the hour, uh, candidate hour. Um, he was challenged that he didn't support the ITA, he didn't support the tax cap, whatnot. And uh, so he was challenged to fill the house, basically. Well, well I, bring some support. So Yeah, I said I would come down there and get call, ask as many people as I could to come down and sign their petition and help out. So basically the reason why you were asking people to come down in your supporters, you're asking them to come down to the ITA well, I didn't meeting. necessarily ask my supporters. I just asked. I told people they needed to start getting involved. And I, I, went over, I signed myself uh, the petition also and made sure my brother did. So, so the people that came down there that you asked to come down, the main reason why you brought them down were, was to make sure that they, or that you asked them to come down there, was to make sure that they signed the petition. Uh, was it a bid to try to influence the balloting? No, I would say that there was a lot of people there that supported us anyway. I would like to think that. I mean, uh, I saw many faces in the crowd other than people that showed up because I gave a call out that support me anyway. And my brother. Yeah, I mean, what is it? It's uh, democracy, right? Mob rule. And well, I, if 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 you take it to the, the the logical conclusion, I mean, pretty much any kind there, any time there's a democratic forum, the person who can bring the most supporters to that forum is the one that's going to win. No, oh, and that's as clear as the water to Bristol. All right, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, Dave, you're be, you're being awful quiet over there. Dave, so what do you have to say about they that? They did pay. Yeah, everyone, you had to, everyone well, the, the way it works is um, anybody can show up and cast an advisory vote, right? If you just show up and mm-hmm. listen. But if you you know if you feel like supporting the organization or whatever, you pay a registration fee. And it goes 25 bucks for a year, and then you get to vote. So there's a you know there's a barrier to entry to to voting. So you got to pony up 25 bucks if you want to participate. And um, so, 
So there shouldn't really be any, you know, that said there was irregularities. There shouldn't really be any irregularities. You look at the number of members who were there, and members all signed a sheet, and you look at the number of votes, and if the number of votes and the number of members lines up, and you have a bunch of money sitting in your in your little cash box from people paying to become members, then, um, you know, that's what the members voted for. Oh, if, you, if you want to have a barrier to membership, you know, that's a different thing. Mm-hmm. Or, or if you want it to be a... You know, a, a, like a private endorsement, you know, just don't have the vote. Just say, you know, so-and-so people decided that these people would get the endorsement. So you're saying that um, since the people decided something other than what they wanted to have endorsed, they decided no one gets it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would look that way. <laughs> right. Well, that's the way it sounds like from an impartial, somebody who, A, wasn't there and who, B, has... Uh, Right, so if, paid money but if the too. members paid money and they voted one way, but it didn't go the way that somebody else wanted it to, then it gets thrown out. So what's the point of the ITA in the first place? Well, it's just like every other regular election, at least national elections. When the vote doesn't go the way they want, they just change it. Oh, you're just saying that because you're a Ron Paul supporter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's I, as clear as the water. No, okay. <laughs> that's as clear as the water is the Bristol. All right, Bay. gentlemen, I, I actually heard a statement this morning. Uh, somebody talking about all the different candidates running against Obama, uh, and Ron Paul was singled out as being dangerous. And I'm scratching my head trying to figure out exactly where it comes down to, except that possibly in the foreign affairs department that because uh, Ron Paul doesn't advocate going and killing everyone on the planet who's not an American that somehow that makes him dangerous? Well, I think it's, we could take that back kind of to the forum the other night where 98% of the people that are running for office there just said that liberty is a nice idea and a nice thought, but totally unachievable. Ron Paul obviously is an idiot because liberty is unachievable and it's just a you know it's a thought from yesteryear and because there's more people in america now it's just it's not a warranted um agenda to have well he is dangerous to the status quo for sure well to the establishment yeah i'd say he would definitely put them in danger and that in that respect then too both both you both josh bennett and aaron bennett you're both seen as a danger to the establishment to the status quo because you guys are coming in basically uh, being willing to overturn the apple cart to say, hey, you have to stop charging so much to sell these apples. I really am mind boggled. I mean, seriously, when you really get down to it, what do people have against us? What do they have against them? I'll just keep it to myself. What do you have against me? What have I advocated for that would, for one, harm you? What have I advocated for that would take something from you? Take something from your neighbor. Can anyone, why would you be against what I say? I mean, I can listen to other people talk, candidates or whatever, and I can listen to them and say, hmm, that will harm me. That will take from me. I do not like that. But I've never said anything ever that advocated taking from anyone or harming anyone or harming anything. And people are somehow against that. Well, well, Josh, I think it's because you're anti-government. That's why you're running for a political no, office. No, wait, 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 yeah. wait. Who has, who has said you're anti-government? Uh, the <laughs> news, the news newspaper. Man. How did they get that information that you were anti-government? Have you guys ever they made... They said I, that Aaron Bennett takes his regular stance of being anti-government, much like he's anti-social. <laughs> and his anti-government brother, who said it was a little less forced, I guess. I don't... And, that's and I think what the newspaper is saying, someone's anti-government, that just means that uh, they don't take the time to do their job and study who they're talking about. Oh, you it's mean just an easy way to go, yeah. Well, well that and easy. that's as clear as the water is a personal no, Okay, well, you know, I, I understand that there was actually a bit of a dust-up over at the newspaper because of those comments that were made about you, the editorializing that took place in the report, uh, and that there, were, that, that there was actually a dust-up from the editorial staff after. I mean, obviously, this is after the paper has already hit print. After other people are making comments on the website saying, you know, why are we bothering paying you to report on news when what you're giving us is your opinion of the news and not the actual facts involved? Again, so much of this comes back to that one simple issue of liberty. What does liberty mean? How do you define liberty? Dave. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, that's, you know, that's the whole idea of... uh 
your rights end where someone else's rights begin. And that that was sort of interesting at the at the candidate forum. I was there for a while, and there were a few of the candidates who said, you know, their understanding of liberty was that uh, you needed a moderator to make sure that people don't use their liberty to harm someone else, right? And that's that's a misunderstanding of the definition. Right? Well, it pre- it's like as long as you don't use your peaceful nature to kill someone, Steve. Uh, then it's okay. But we need to moderate people's peaceful nature because they might use it to hack their neighbor to bits with an axe, right? Obviously, the person who'd be using the term peaceful mm-hmm. doesn't understand what it means in that in that context. Um, and well, that's, the very the, the very idea that somehow freedom needs a moderator it does presuppose that people are not going to be responsible with their freedom. It presupposes that if you don't place a speed limit on a street that all of a sudden people are going to be going down that street at 100 miles an hour, oh, yeah, even if or, it's a residential zone. Right, or but, that, they'll, that they'll violate someone's rights of some sort. But, but of course, that other person has rights because, you know, because they're a, a free, sovereign being, right? And so, so your freedom does not give you license to harm someone else or to violate someone else's property bounds or whatever. That's kind of the definition. It's not really, freedom's not like this thing that you get, right? It's it's the state of living peacefully with everyone else, right? Again, that presupposes that you somehow have a right to live. Dave. <laughs> yeah, it, it eventually you get down, you know, to, to some fundamentals that are required for human <laughs> existence. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so it was interesting hearing the the difference, because I think, I think when questions like that were posed at the forum, different candidates had a different meaning of that in their minds. And... To me, their answers were more more telling of what they thought, you know, freedom was, than what they how they thought freedom should be, you know. Well, uh, the very the very fact that all of them were willing to take away someone else's freedom simply to advance some other political goal that that to well, me well the is, way they is, the way they would word it was, uh, uh, you know, one person's freedom can't come at the expense of several others. Right. But that's it's missing the point, the definition of the word. That's like, you know, your right to the property you're on um, can't come at the expense of your neighbors around you. Well, if you own your property, by definition, it can't. Right. That's the whole. That's why we allocate resources that way. I mean, the world is scarce. So you have yours and other people have theirs. And if something is yours and you have title to it, then it's not someone else's. That's that's what the word means. And what you're doing on it isn't going to affect someone else's. Right. Yeah, but Dave, we have to look to the examples that history lays down. Like the American West was probably the most anarchical, free society there was, right? Yeah. And look, they killed all the Indians, didn't they? All those free movers west. Well, the, the government did when they moved west. What? what? Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. And this, no, is, this, is, this, no. is a, this is something that's been perpetuated in popular culture. I, I mean, virtually every movie about the Old West... No. P- pictures the um, natives that were living there as these peace-loving hippies, basically, uh, that were going around putting flowers in each other's hair, and that the basic settlers that were going out into this uh, this land were going out moving into the backyard of the hippies and started to kill them. I mean, that's basically the way that the movies portray yeah, it. The, well, actually, uh, it, you're right. That's basically true. And um, I mean, that's true that how that how they're portrayed. But, that's not any anything true to history. We actually read a book about um, Lincoln. We read Lincoln Unmasked at the Austrian Scholars uh, book meeting a couple weeks ago, and what they talked about, uh, what Tom DiLorenzo talked about in the book was uh, most of the genocide of the Indians was was due to railroad cartels, or much of it was. So Lincoln was a lobbyist for the big railroad cartels, which a lot of people don't know, and they wanted to go they wanted to go west, and they wanted to do it without making agreements with settlers, without making agreements with farmers, without making agreements with Indians who were out there. And so they would lobby the government to give them eminent domain and an army and whatever, so they'd go out and just kill whoever they wanted uh, with the state sanction. Exactly. The, the private railroads who did that, couldn't do that. We got uh, the phone lines are, are are piling up here, so at, at okay. some point I'd like to release well, some of the callers. To I'd like to make the comment that Dave's an idiot. Well, obviously he reads, <laughs> which would make him dangerous. Right. The, to gov- begin with. the government did not kill the Indians, and that's as clear as water's crystal. <laughs> All right, four five eight talk is the 